Godot Tutorials is not sponsored by or affiliated with the Godot game engine. So right now our game is basically complete. It's got all the elements that you would expect from a simple Pong game. However, there is one issue and that is with our current AI. In this case, it perfectly aims for the center of the paddle. Humans do not aim perfectly for anything. And in this case, especially for the center of the paddle, and so in the case of our AI, because it's always perfect, it does not feel human. And that is an issue. An AI should feel human. The solution to this is to add randomness to where the AI paddle is aiming for. We have two types of mathematical randomness. The first is uniform randomness, or in this case, a discrete uniform distribution among the range, and the second type of mathematical randomness is non-uniform randomness. And this would include basically every other type of distribution, including normal distribution, gamma distribution, and beta distribution. In this episode, I will only deal with normal distribution. First, let's get started with discrete uniform distribution. The discrete uniform distribution is a symmetric probability distribution where a finite set of values are equally likely to be observed. Basically, this is your typical ratio of 1 divided by n, where n is the set of values. The benefit of using discrete uniform randomness is that it is unpredictable. In this case, the Godot game engine does provide us a discrete uniform distribution. This is, for example, the random integer range function. In this case, if we set the random integer range between the values of 1 and 10, the randomness of getting a 1 or a 10 and everything in between is the same. We have a 1 in 10 chance of getting any of the integers, which is a 10% chance. A real world example would be a single die row or a single six sided die row. In this case, because it is uniform, the probability of rolling any values between 1 and 6 are equal, 1 divided by n. And to summarize, the discrete uniform distribution randomness is great when you want pure randomness, unpredictable randomness. However, what if we want something more predictable? In this case, what we can do is use a normal distribution random generator. Normal distribution is a symmetric probability around the mean, or in this case, you can think of it as the middle, sort of. And basically, all occurrences closer to the mean are more frequent than occurrences further away from the mean. The benefit of using normal distribution randomness is that it feels more human. And this is simply because as humans, we experience normal distribution in our everyday life. Let's take a moment to think about it. We can find normal distribution in the heights of adults, the color in flowers. For example, not all roses are equally red. Not all white roses are equally white. On top of that, the hours of sleep. The average tends to be six through eight, and it is abnormal to be under or above that depending on your age range. We also have quality control in products that we purchase, for example, laptops, TVs, cell phones. And on top of that, we have games such as Monopoly, which use two six-sided dices. When using two six-sided dices, the possibilities fit a normal distribution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the example of two six-sided dices. And in this case, you can see that each die has a value between one and six. However, we can never get a total value of one, nor can we get a total value of 13. And there's only one chance to get a total value of two. However, there are six chances to get a total value of seven. And in this case, our two six sided dices fit the normal distribution where the closer we are to the mean, which is seven, the more likely the occurrence will happen. In this case, to row a value of two, that would be one in 36. However, to row a seven, that would be six in 36 or one in six. So in a game like Monopoly, expect your values to be between the values of 5 and 9 and plan for that. So using normal distribution randomness in our game will give us the feeling of randomness, but with the consistency that feels human. 
In this case, our AI aims for the center, but not perfectly and not always, almost like a human that is a beginner. And on top of that, like all game features, iteration will be needed to flesh out the feel of our AI. And this is out of the scope for this series. So here I have an example of a primitive normal distribution randomness. And in this case, we're just doing random integer range one through six twice. We add that and we return the value back. And it is the caller's job to convert that. And in this case, that would be function point conversion, where we can convert the returned value between a value of zero and the size on the y axis for our pedal. Now, another primitive normal distribution randomness generator is where we get a random value between zero and one and return that back in a decimal format. And to do that, we just get a random value between zero and one, six times divided by the number of random calls. And of course, be careful because the more you add, the closer to the center the values become. In this case, you can see that we are returning the addition of random float values six times and then dividing that by six. And then, of course, again, it is the caller's job to convert that. And we can convert that between a value of zero and the size on the Y. So let's go ahead and code. In this case, let's start by adding our primitive distribution random number generator. In this case, I head over to the miscellaneous folder. I'm going to add it in math. And over here, this is where I'm going to add the code. From there, I'm going to create two variables. The first is to iterate because I'd like to experiment with how many times we call the random function method. And the second variable will be result, which is what we will return back to whoever calls our static function. Now, from there, I'm going to need to randomize our seed value, and we can call that using the randomize method. Now, in this case, we could just return randf and do this six times. just like our example slideshow. However, we have no control through code on how many times we call random float, except by hard coding it. And so in this case, I'm going to use a for loop and that will control how many times we iterate and how many times we call random float to change our result. So in this case, we can just do for i in iterate. And from there, result plus equals random float. From there, it's as simple as just returning back our result and dividing that by a converted integer value, in this case, our iterate. That way, no matter how many times we call our random float method, whether it's six or one, through editing one variable, we can change our result. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as six, just like our slideshow example. And one more thing, I'm actually going to print this to the screen so we can see whether or not it works. And that's basically it. After that, we can head over to our AI Paddle GD file. From there, we can actually have our function that will change our chase position. Right now, our chase position is just half height. However, in this case, we would like a variable to hold our chase position. And so on the top, we can just create that variable. From there, we can change our half height to call our chase position. And in this case, nothing has changed. Our chase position still chases at half height. And that's basically it. However, we do need to add one more thing, and that is the on ready keyword, because half height is dependent on our bound box, which needs to wait until our viewport is loaded onto the scene tree because our bound box is just basically our window size. If you don't enjoy using the on ready keyword, we could do the same thing by just calling the float and then changing our chase position in our initialization virtual method and just make sure that that equals our half height. Regardless, I'm going to keep it as is with the on ready keyword here and let's move on. From there, we can create our function to actually change the chase position. In this case, we'll just call it function change position. We return back nothing because all it does is change internal variables. 
Now, when we create our function, let's first get our distribution number. From there, let's go ahead and create some variables for our random min and max values. Because we are going to convert our variable to a new value, and we need to provide it the min and max of our range, which is just 0 and 1. From there, we need to convert it into a new range, which is just our paddle size from 0 and size y, and that will be our new range. So let's go ahead and create those variables now. And that's basically it. We have our variable, which is between 0 and 1, which follows a normal distribution. So a majority of the time, it's going to be around the values of 0 0.5. We know that our min and max for that value will be 0 and 1. And we would like to convert that to our paddle size, which is between the values 0 and size on the y-axis. From there, this is as simple as converting to our new position. And this looks a little bit familiar because we've actually used the point conversion multiple times throughout our code base. Lastly, what we can do is assign our chase position to equal the new position. Of course, we can get rid of this entire line of code by just calling chase position equals our new conversion as well. It doesn't matter how, as long as we get chase position to become something different. Lastly, we need to head over to our gamestate.gd file and actually apply our change position function. In this case, I personally believe that it is best to leave this in the function that handles our ball and paddle collision. And all we simply have to do is paddle.change position. Lastly, now that we call our change position, let's go ahead and actually look at the output and see what happens. So in this case, notice that when we do our random values, we're going to change our output and it's going to be between the ranges of 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. And if we keep this going along, you'll notice that we aren't really getting 0 0.0 through 0 0.2, nor are we really getting 0 0.8 through 1.0. And so in this case, our random distribution is following that normal distribution curve, where most of the time we're getting values closer to 0 0.5, and we're not getting numbers close to the edges of 0 0.0 and 1.0. And if we do, they are very rarely happening. So let me go ahead and fast forward this. And the more we play, the more you see we're not getting anything between 0 0.2 or between 0 0.8 and 1.0, just like you would expect from a normal distribution curve. And actually, I believe this is the first time we got 0 0.7. And basically, our game works. It feels human, and again, feeling human is subjective. But if you want it to feel human, you need to iterate until you get the feeling you want from your AI. Now that everything's done, you can go ahead and actually clean the code up a little. I'm going to do that right now. I noticed two things. The first is the name of our distribution and go ahead and apply that to all the errors. The second is our change position method. It's not descriptive. I'm going to change it to chase. So change chase position. Go ahead and actually apply that to wherever it's being called. Lastly, the static function primitive distribution random is not as descriptive. I'm going to go ahead and give it normal and change it where it is being called. And that's basically it for me. I'm not going to go ahead and touch this code. I think it is good just as it is. Lastly, I will keep the print statement and remove it just before I release the game online. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for clicking the like button and thank you for clicking the subscribe button. Don't forget to download this episodes project on the GitHub link down below in the description. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.